Hi guys, Blackbox here. In this video I will be talking about the ADIRS, the Air Data Inertial Reference System. The ADIRS system provides the vital information to fly and navigate the A320. Since this is a very big topic, um, it will be taking quite some time to explain um, all of it. Nevertheless, stick with me. Um, afterwards, I'm sure you'll see the Airbus with uh, different eyes. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. The ADIRS, the Air Data Inertial Reference System, consists of three identical ADIRU Air Data Inertial Reference Units. Each ADIRU consists of one Air Data Reference Computer, ADR for short, and one Laser Gyro Inertial Reference System, IR for short. Each ADIRU provides important information to the EFIS, FMGCs, and also other systems. To be more precise, the Air Data Reference Computer provides data like MAC, airspeed, barometric altitude, angle of attack, temperature, and overspeed warnings. The Inertial Reference System provides important data like attitude, track, heading, acceleration, aircraft position, ground speed, and flight path vector information. In order to be able to display all of these um, important informations, there are a lot of probes which will provide the necessary information to the ADRs system. So let's take a look first at all the probes which deliver information to the ADR system. All of the necessary probes are at the front of the aircraft. On the left you have three static ports, two pitot tubes, two angle of attack sensors and one total air temperature probe. Moving to the right side of the aircraft we can see three more static ports, one more angle of attack sensor, one more pitot tube and one more TAT probe. For those of you who want more detailed information regarding the probes, have a look at this picture. Now, obviously, since these systems are so vital, you have many redundant probes all spread around the front of the fuselage of the aircraft. Now, you can notice that on the left-hand side, you have a lot of probes for the captain's instrument, and on the right-hand side, you have a lot of probes for the first officer instruments. Now the next picture looks pretty complicated but it just shows how the different probes are connected to the three Adiros. Notice that in this picture you can see that the standby airspeed and the standby altimeter are not connected to an Adiru but get their source directly from the probes. So this means that even if all three Adirus fail, he will still have standby airspeed and altimeter indications shown on the ESIS as long as you have valid information coming from the related probes. Let me just uh, demonstrate you this in the FS Labs A320. So here I'm switching off all three ADR units. So all normal speed and altitude indications on the primary flight displays are lost and you're left with the so-called bus system, the backup speed scale system and on the altimeter scale you can see that the altitude information from the ADR has been replaced by the GPS altitude. Now on the ESIS you can see that the speed scale is still working showing you the raw data indicated airspeed. Now for the altimeter scale for some reason in the FS Labs you have to set the QNH 1013 and then you'll get the altitude information displayed. 
but that just uh, proves that the ESIS still works even though all three ADR units have failed. Right, so let's get back to the basic architecture of the uh, DRO units. Remember, each of those three units consisting of one ADR part and one inertial reference part. So let's talk about the ADIRU 1 unit, which receives its uh, signals from the captain's angle of attack, total air temperature, static, and pitot probes. Same applies uh, for the first officer side, where the information from the probes goes into the ADIRU number 2 unit. ADIRU 3 unit acts as a backup unit and gets its information from the standby pitot, static, angle of attack, and the captain's TAT probe. So, simply said, the ADIRO 1 unit supplies the captain's EFIS, the ADIRO 2 unit supplies the first officer's EFIS, and the ADIRO 3 unit can be used as a backup via the switching panel to either the captain's or the first officer's EFIS. However, they cannot be connected at the same time to both the captain's and the first officer's EFIS. Right, let's just quickly jump into the FS Labs A320 cockpit and demonstrate how this works. So here we can see all systems are working normally and I'm going to switch off the ADR number one unit. As mentioned before, since the ADR one unit supplies the captain's EFIS, we can see that here on the captain's EFIS speed and altitude informations have been lost. The ICAM shows the fault and on the first officer side you can see all indications are normal since this is supplied by the ADR unit number two. In order to recover speed and altitude information on the captain side we simply switch the air data to captain three and that way Speed and altitude information are now supplied by ADR unit number 3 and normal indications have been restored. Alright, let's do the same for the first officer side. Switching off ADR unit number 2. And uh, no surprise, the speed and altitude informations on the first officer's primary flight display have been lost. And of course, on the captain side, indications are normal since the ADR1 unit is supplying those informations. Now let's do this procedure. Switch the air data to first officer 3. And then the speed and altitude information on the first officer primary flight display are being supplied by ADR3 and hence they are restored. Okay, so let's go one step further and let's have a look what happens if we switch off ADR1 and ADR2. The first thing you'll notice is that the autothrust and the autopilot system will disengage. And also the aircraft will leave the normal law and go into the alternate law. You may have guessed already, the airspeed and altitude indications on the captains and the first officer's EFIS are lost. So let's quickly look at the ECAM procedure. We can see in red, auto flight, autopilot off. And below that, you can see NAV ADR 1 and 2 fault. So let's go ahead and clear auto flight. And then do the procedure, air data switching, captain 3. And of course, no surprise to you, speed and altitude informations have been recovered on the captain's primary flight display. Now since ADR3 cannot be switched to both sides at the same time, the co-pilot's primary flight display still has no speed and altitude indication. So what do you do if you want to transfer controls to the first officer side? Well, you just simply switch the air data to FO3 and then of course the information is transferred to the 
primary flag display of the first officer. Now let's look at the IR part of the ADERS system. Simply put, the inertial reference unit consists of a laser gyro and accelerometers to provide uh, position-related data, like uh, the attitude, position of the aircraft, direction, ground speed, accelerations, and angular rates. All of those informations are shown on the navigation display and on the primary flight display. For example, the position of the aircraft, the heading, the ground speed, and of course the attitude of the aircraft. So let's now switch off IR unit number one and see what indications we get on the displays. As expected, we have lost a lot of information on our EFIS. For example, the heading, position of the aircraft, ground speed, and of course the attitude of the aircraft. What we have left is the information from the ADR unit, like speed and altitude. Going over to the first officer side, and of course, since IR unit number two is still working, you would expect everything looking normal on the first officer's AFIS displays. Since we have three IR units installed, we can use the switching panel again and switch attitude to Captain 3. And as expected, informations on the Captain's AFIS displays are being restored. Now the same applies if we fail IR unit number two. And of course, co-pilot's informations can be restored by switching attitude heading to FO3. So let's finally look at what happens if we fail IR unit one and two. Again, auto thrust and Autopilot systems disengage. We have um, alternate law, and as expected, the captain's and first officer's EFIS are missing a lot of information. So let's do the ECAM procedure auto flight, autopilot off. We'll clear that. NAF TCAS fault, we clear NAF, flight control, alternate law protection lost, max speed 320 knots, we'll clear that, and we'll clear the auto flight, auto thrust off. Then we'll switch added heading to Captain 3, and of course all inertial reference part information from IR3 will now be displayed on the Captain's EFIS. Again, if you need to transfer controls to the co-pilot, just simply switch the added heading switch to FO3. And as you can see, the information from the IR unit number 3 can not be displayed at the same time on the captain's and the first officer's EFIS. Alright, this concludes the video on the subject ADIRS. I hope you've uh, stuck with me until the end of this video. If you have, congratulations, you now know a lot more about the Airbus systems. Hope you've enjoyed it, leave a like, and if you have any questions, post them in the section down below. Until next time, happy landings.